Welcome to the first day of programs for Vancouver Art Book Fair. Um, if you're just joining us, my name is Vivian Sming, pronouns she, her, they, them. And I publish artist books through my studio, Sming Sming Books, and I'm the guest curator for this year's virtual programming. Um, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that Vancouver Art Book Fair takes place on the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam, um, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. And I'm streaming here from my home in the Bay Area on the land of the Wameka um, Ohlone people. And as we're here to talk about um, books and publishing, um, I also want to acknowledge the many, many, many histories and knowledges and languages that have been erased through um, the prioritization of paper as being the only source of history, legitimacy, and value. And so I really want to offer these two days of programs as a way to understand how publishing can be a site of resistance, restoration, contestation, and also imagination. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, and for this program, I'd like to introduce the Black Lunch Table, um, who will be leading a Wikipedia edit-a-thon where we will all be creating, updating, and improving Wikipedia articles pertaining to the lives and works of Black visual artists. Um, and a little bit about the, um, the group, the Black Lunch Table is an oral history archiving project, which was first staged in 2005, and is an ongoing collaboration with New York-based artist Heather Hart and Chicago-based artist Gina Valentine and um, the Black Lunch Table's primary aim is the production of discursive sites wherein cultural producers engage in dialogue on a variety of critical issues. Um, Black Lunch Table mobilizes a democratic rewriting of contemporary cultural history by animating discourse around and among the people living in it. With that, here is Eliza from Black Lunch Table. Hi there. Um, thank you so much, Vivian, and everyone at uh, the Vancouver Art Book Fair for hosting us. Um, it's it's really exciting to uh, get to engage with a, a kind of archive that runs very sort of parallel to a lot of the archival interest work that we have. Um, and there's a couple things already that I want to talk about that you sort of addressed in the introduction, but I'll, I'll try to <laughs> I'll try to keep everything in line. Um, so, uh, hi everyone. As Vivian said, uh, I am Eliza Myrie, and I'm here representing the Black Lunch Table. Uh, I am the Wikimedia or Wikipedia project manager. Um, the Black Lunch Table actually has you know, taken many forms over over time since its inception in 2005. Um, and the current ones are uh, an archiving project that includes roundtables and uh, a Wikimedia project, which all of our aims are always the production of discursive sites and, and writing our own history, which largely has been maybe pushed to the wayside or suppressed or all these other things. So, um, I'm going to talk about the wiki side of the project and uh, kind of the importance for all sorts of workers, um, especially workers who are building other archives, like all of those folks uh, at presses or participating artists, artists making books um, can do and, and what we can kind of do through editing on Wikipedia to make that sort of change. So. Um, as Vivian noted, uh, the Black Lunch Table is a nomadic project, but we have two hubs uh, where the co-founders and others live. So uh, one is Chicago, Illinois, which is where I'm dialing in in our like new virtual land um, where I'm calling in from. And, and New York is our other sort of home hub. But we, uh, through the, the wonder of digital life, um, have other proxies and editors who work throughout the Caribbean and in the Southern United States, working in Nigeria, um, working out on the West Coast. So uh, there is something that's really wonderful about uh, being able to be a nomadic project and a digital project and, and welcome um, so many folks in from so many different places. Uh, so my charge today a little bit uh, with the time we have uh, and you know I'll be with you all here and then um, I'll make sure that I write at the end and maybe I'll put it in the chat in just a second where I will be after where everyone can come 
And if you don't have a Wikipedia user, I'll give you a little info about how to get that. And then truly like today, start editing Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> so I wanna just uh, kind of sort of say a little bit about our affinity for uh, accepting this invitation from the Vancouver Art Book Fair and a little bit just kind of conceptually about the project. Um, we were super psyched <laughs> to uh, be a part of this. It's Black Lunch Table is an artist run project like through and through and uh, you know all of us I think in some capacity um, have produced artist publications or are teaching artist books or paper making or lots of different things. So, so we have a real reverence for the kind of work that the presses and the artists who are participating in something like the Vancouver Art, Art Book Fair. That's a little bit of a tongue twister for me today. Um, you know, the kind of work that they're doing and um, these are real workers, right? Like there, there are other kinds of people who are responsible for putting these forms out in the world that are doing uh, the kind of uh, work of recording and marking that things are happening, like that these artists were here or that these ideas were thought or these kind of media were, were realized in all sorts of ways. So we have um, a lot of reverence for books and artist publishing to begin with. And we've also partnered with um, other book fairs in the past, uh, No Coast Editions, who hosts the Chicago Art Book Fair, which is on some bit of pause this year, um, is, is another group that we've hosted edit-a-thons and, um, a photo book, a photo booth with. So we really, uh, I, it's just, it's really our pleasure to um, engage with folks who are in these kind of circles and also um, empower them to feel like they can also do the work of putting their artists, their presses, their this information that circulates in a very particular way into um, a larger stream of public knowledge, right? Um, and I say this knowing that there are, and we talk about them all the time, I'm gonna share a little bit about um, how we think about Wikipedia as this uh, site of complete and total knowledge, right? That the entire, everybody's supposed to have. We have lots of uh, contestations about that and, and is that possible or real? But I think, um, you know, we also have to acknowledge that we, all look up things on our phone and utilize Wikipedia as a space of knowledge, right? So it's just one site of knowledge, um, but it's still an important one. Um, and I think that, uh, like I said, there's a real uh, affinity between those working to document artists' work and practices through publication and the ability to uh, build certain kinds of niche knowledge on Wikipedia. And really that's Black Lunch Table's goal. It doesn't, we are about black artists because we're black people working for black artists. Um, but we also want everyone to do it for themselves, whatever their thing is, right? Like somebody might be like, there's not, the champion skateboarders are not on Wikipedia. Like they deserve a space. So like, we want you to edit and put in whatever is there. It's super important. Um, so uh, while MIT Press is not a small book press, um, I do want to share with you all, um, this is a book that is just coming out this month. We're really excited to have contributed to um, Wikipedia at 20. Uh, it's a collection of essays by a bunch of different people involved with the Wicca, Wikipedia and Wikimedia movement. Um, it is on the occasion of Wiki's uh, 20th birthday. That's why it's called Wiki at 20. Um, and uh, we contributed an essay that is titled The Myth of the Comprehensive Historical Archive. And um, I just want to read uh, the first, I guess, page of our of our contribution. Um, Gina Gina did the heavy lifting <laughs> on writing this essay, so I want to make sure that um, we sort of say that. But it is it is really a, a, a team um, conceptual sort of thought. So I hope that this at least uh, frames a little bit of how we think about Wikipedia and um, 
you know, we love to have discussions about Wiki in general. If somebody wants to get on the edit-a-thon line and talk about its problems and where we can uh, make changes, that's, that's, we're into it. So I'm just gonna read um, this page briefly to y'all uh, and then talk a little bit more specifically about Wiki. <clears throat> okay, so the myth of the comprehensive historical archive. Wikipedia is an undertaking of mythic proportions, as is addressing its deficits. The Black Lunch Table project is inspired by the myth, the potential possibility, and works to increase the conversation around resource equity, gender, and racial bias, and knowledge gaps within and beyond Wikipedia. From the outset, Wikipedia has espoused the ideals of free and open knowledge, catalyzing a mass authorship of cultural history worldwide. As the site on which narratives are drafted, contested, revised, and cited, Wikipedia attempts a hopeful and earnest approximation of a comprehensive and democratically authored history. This is, of course, an impossible goal. Realizing an archive that is both complete and democratic is a task of a mythic proportion. It would require establishing technological, educational, and cultural resource equity worldwide, and the deprioritizing of Eurocentric historical narratives and English, English language Wikipedia. Nonetheless, Wikipedians are collectively invested in constructing an archive of infinite scope and complexity. We are enamored of this mythic utopian vision. Myths as metaphors for infinite tasks of unfathomable scope abound throughout culture. Perhaps the most well-known is that of Sisyphus, eternally pushing a boulder uphill and of Penelope's endless weaving and unweaving her tapestry. The interminable tasks themselves are generally not the focus when we speak of them. Rather, they are metaphors for present or past situations and offer propositions for imagining the future. As with other myths, the quest for a comprehensive encyclopedia is itself significant, but the various discourses it catalyzes and contributes to are just as important. These discourses are Wikipedia specific, but they relate to issues symptomatic of local and international socio-political conditions. The Black Lunch Table Wikipedia project is inspired by the myth, the potential possibility. The work we do contributes to discourse around resource equity, gender and racial bias and knowledge gaps with and beyond Wikipedia. Our work both directly and indirectly affects change around those issues. While we don't imagine our project will be able to solve all of its own goals, we do hope that our engagement with Wikipedia will affect how folks conceive of historical authorship more broadly and that they will come to share our belief that histories are neither static nor linear. Through educating the public about our project as it works to identify knowledge gaps on Wikipedia, we hope that everyone will feel they can and should contribute to historical authorship as we all have something at stake in how our histories are told. So um, we go on to talk about lots of various things, um, but I think that kind of frames up what we want to do and that everyone um, has the capacity to work within their specific knowledge gap um, and that it's important. So um, I am going to try to give you all a very brief summary about being an editor and and participating on the Wikipedia platform, not as a reader, but as a, a contributor, which uh, all of us, I feel confident saying all of us, uh, are users of Wikipedia, right? We read Wikipedia, oh my God, no, that's not true, that so-and-so is not five foot seven, or whatever random things it might say, um, but I think there's something really uh, crucial about being an editor and knowing that you are one of actually a really small, you know, uh, proportion or percentage of people who read Wikipedia versus people who write Wikipedia. So I am going to uh, share my screen at this time. And let's see. Okay. All right, let me get my old guy to give you the full screen here. Okay, um, so uh, 
the there we go um not there we go go back <laughs> The Black Lunch Table, um, as we sort of said before, began in 2005 uh, at the Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture, where Heather and Gina were participants. I've also been a participant. It's a wonderful um, school slash art residency up in Skowhegan, Maine. And uh, the photo that we have our kind of goals over um, here is actually one of the photographs of the first literal black lunch table that happened, right? So um, there is a phenomenon of why all the black kids sit together at school uh, or why all the Asian kids sit together or, or whomever grouped by some characteristic. And uh, this is the literal place that Black Lunch Table and the production of these discursive sites began. So just again to reiterate what our, um, with all facets of the project, our uh, goals are the production of discursive sites wherein people engage in critical dialogue with one another on topics directly affecting our community, mobilizing a democratized rewriting of history, amending the art historical canon with records of artists from the African diaspora. And um, as I said, we have had lots of uh, events over time in lots and lots of locations. So this here at the bottom is just a little bit of um, a list of places we've been. Um, this is just a photograph from one of our roundtable events where we invite community members to come together and uh, we use a deck of cards uh, that has questions specific to the community and also specific to being a Black person and invite people to speak to one another. We record the conversations and then they get moved into an archive um, that is also metadata tagged and accessible to researchers and other users. So um, this is this is just a representation of kind of the other side of the project, but a wonderful um, opportunity for folks to come together and have conversations and meet new people. Um, but for the Wikipedia side, um, we have two important uh, statistics that sort of drive the work essentially, right? Like, yes, we want black artists to be in Wikipedia because they've, you know, the canon is not defined by us. And if we work to push against it, you know, we'll make headway all these things. But, you know, a central issue uh, behind becoming a Wikipedia editor is that Wikipedia is crowdsourced. It is volunteer based. You can't pay somebody to edit into Wikipedia. It's against the kind of like stated rules, community designations. So what we have is um, a set of articles that are essentially deemed authoritative, right? Like we believe what is written on Wikipedia uh, to some degree. And, and what we have to understand is that 86% of Wikipedia editors are men and 77% of Wikipedia editors are white. So that is to say something about uh, authority. That is something to say about uh, participation. It's, it says a whole bunch of things about class. It says a lot of things. And it basically means that whatever the alternate percentages are, 13% are non non-male uh, or non-men identifying or and you know 23 percent is that the right math 23 percent um are are not uh you know identify as something other than white so that really makes a huge difference because do i assume or would i assume that a white male editor's main interest is like a young black artist Probably not. You know, some of them, of course, do. There's great, there's great, you know, Black Lunch Table wants to encourage all people to edit the the lives and the works of Black artists and all sorts of minority groups and, you know, write things that you think are important to general social knowledge, but that doesn't mean people do. So these are really um, important statistics for us. And over the years, they've kind of remained kind of flat. Um, 
so again, Wiki is crowdsourced, right? So we can, the community of editors is around 80,000 people. Uh, and we have to sort of leverage that against the fact that 470 million unique searches happen a month. So I don't know what the percentage is there, but it's big to small. Um, and it makes a difference that those 80,000 people are writing what is the authoritative knowledge base for 500 million searches a month, right? It, it's, it's, it's really quite incredible once you kind of think about it. Um, so we work largely on English Wikipedia, um, but it's also kind of amazing that there are a whole bunch of other um, language and access spaces that Wiki, um, Wiki hosts and we, we do, um, we have a lot of internal conversations about translation and who's allowed to translate and why should we translate and should you work directly in another language, you know, there's, there's all these kind of conversations that happen and they're really important ones. And um, also that the priority language in wiki is English that's another, you know, uh, contestation about wiki but we also are, you know, black artists working in America and our main language is English. So we kind of use that as our home wiki, but um, we encourage folks, if you have another language, if you want to translate, um, there's a ton of work to be done on wiki in, in those spaces as well. So these are just a couple examples of the other wikis that are out there. Um, and just kind of, uh, I'm going to give you a brief capsule of the basic guidelines and then show you kind of um, an example of, of how editing can be impactful to an artist and, and to something as specific as the Vancouver Art Book Fair. Um, so when I reference that 80,000 editors number, what is uh, necessary to be understood, and maybe I think people don't understand when they look up wiki, is while people are writing these things, they're not just writing them in a vacuum. It's not just like Joe over there and no one ever sees what Joe wrote or has any idea. There is, there is a completely built up um, set of community and administrative levels that sort of ensure that things that are reasonable are happening, right? So I think we've all, probably heard about here and there, you know, some company changing, I think it was with Patagonia, some company changed a Wikipedia article to reflect positively about their own company, and it was very quickly changed back. So there is a real um, community that wants to uphold the uh, good authority of Wikipedia. Um, and these are these are the kind of five pillars that help all of us who participate do that. So Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. It is not a space for subjective opinion, uh, reviews, any other sort of thing. It is for objective information about a subject, which points to pillar number two, Wiki is always written from a neutral point of view. When we invite editors to begin editing, we remind them that this should look like writing that you're doing for a term paper. There's no, well, I think John is really, really great and he has beautiful hair. Nope. You can say John is a person who is 39 years old. Awesome. If someone in a review somewhere stated uh, some things about the work, like the work was received really poorly, you can cite that and include it, but you can't personally, as a writer of an article or a contributor to an article, do anything subjective. You have to keep it completely neutral. Um, so Wiki is super, super free. Anybody can take it, use it, edit it, change it, do whatever, right? So there's a couple of things that happen in terms of um, how you have to cite things and how you have to phrase things. Again, plagiarism is bad everywhere. It's also bad on Wiki. Um, so you as an editor should always be ready for one, this content to be changed uh, because 
the whole encyclopedia is there for you to change. And also, um, it's not something that you can say, I wrote this article on Wikipedia and it's mine now, like Eliza Beth Myrie made this. And I could be writing it and someone's changing it at the same moment. So it's, it's really something that you have to detach from and understand images, writing, everything has complete free and open um, license for anybody to use. Of course, like all things, editors should treat each other with respect and civility. We have to be kind to one another. There are always, like any community, there's people who don't like things other people do. Um, and, you know, there's bias. There's people who reverse articles because they don't think so and so is important enough to be in the encyclopedia or is you know, has done enough to merit being included in this kind of encyclopedic knowledge. They're not an important enough person. And we do a lot of work to push back against those kind of um, boundaries and limitations and demand that we've been marginalized the entire time. So the reason you're not seeing this person as notable is because of systematic oppression, right? Like if we were uh, marginalized out in the world, of course, Wikipedia is duplicating that marginalization and we don't accept it. So, you know, this, this fifth pillar that says Wikipedia has no firm rules, we are uh, pretty, pretty um, adamant about pushing back against that. Um, again, neutral point of view, uh, verifiability is a super important thing um, as much as you can use a neutral point of view. It's something that has to be um, also, uh, we like to say that you do it based on a something that you can trace the like kind of URL or the, the publishing back to. It's like, it shouldn't be somebody's blog. It shouldn't be uh, your Tumblr post, anything like that, right? It's something that would show up under like Google News or like in a scholarly journal. Uh, you, did I skip one page? I know where I'm chatting, chatting on. Um, but in terms of reliable sources, this is this is the slide I'm looking for. So something that's published, it's academic or peer reviewed university level texts, um, books. Lots of people think that you can't use physical books in uh, wiki, but you absolutely can. You can cite actual books into uh, the online encyclopedia. So these are um, the neutral point of view, the verifiability of a source, and of course, no original research. That just goes right in line with uh, keeping that objective, objective space of writing. If it's something that hasn't been verified through publishing and peer review, et cetera, et cetera, it doesn't belong on, it doesn't belong on Wiki. Um, also important, we should never be editing or writing about, first of all, ourselves. We don't get to write our own wiki page. We can't ask our best friend like, John, can you write my page for me? Um, it's another level of keeping something extremely, extremely neutral and objective. So never any financial family or friend relations. I did that one. Um, on Wiki, it's one of those sites where every single thing you do is stored. It is uh, there to be reversed and also there to be marked if things like vandalism or um, aggressive kind of like bias editing is happening. So those are not often, but they're real and we talk about them because sometimes we experience that. Um, and again, about copyright, don't take someone else's copyright. These are, these are some, some pretty basic things, um, especially for folks who are working in publishing or uh, bookmaking. You want everyone to have their acknowledgement, which is why paraphrasing and citations are really, really critical on Wikipedia. 
Um, same thing about images and those licenses. When you put something up, you have to say that it's your original work and you're revoking the license or that it's something that has been released as a public domain image. If you're super interested in that, this is something that Black Lunch Table does a lot and we're happy to show you how to do if you're a photographer and that's how you wanna to contribute to the platform. Um, and uh, I will, Vivian, I'll ask you if you want me to show the Camila thing or we can sort of defer. I'm happy to do whichever way you want because I know we've run up to the time, but I, I do wanna um, just put up our bit.ly. So anybody who wants to come edit with me, after ask any questions you can be experienced not experienced um i'll be at bit.ly backslash all capitals w-i-k-i-b-l-t um until what three pacific time is that the right i'm like which zone am i in <laughs> and we actually shared the bitly um slash a black lunch table meet is that still oh okay that's still that works too so i can i have the ability to be in both of them and i'll sort of check and put a little sign up in one that says go to the other but um either one is fine um so yeah this you know this is just another website to find us but uh we kind of have put up enough so if someone's interested they can source us on the internet a couple different ways um so i would just love to if we have another three minutes or so, I can just briefly show. Um, I don't entirely know what Camila is doing with the fair. I know you said that they have an artist project uh, or something happening. Oh, um, Camila will be talking tomorrow, yeah. Oh, okay, awesome. Okay, so uh, yeah, Camila is awesome. And um, someone that is on our, let me just get to, let me just get to the other page. Um, so you all can still see this, right? Camila's page is up. Okay. Um, so one of the things that's really important to us is, uh, yes, we want people to edit into an artist page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But like the other thing about working with living artists is presumably if we're any good and we are doing anything, we're always doing stuff, right? So there's no like, and then they just stopped making work and we didn't have to update their page. So while we do a lot of work to get people into Wikipedia to begin with, with kind of like a summary capsule about what they do, they're gonna keep working. So all the pages always still need more um, updating, right? So uh, this is just another way to participate. You can write new articles for people or you also could, you know, I have a couple like pet artists that I'm like, oh, so-and-so won a prize. Let me make sure that I put that on their page because, you know, that feels great as an artist when all the things that you're doing are kept somewhere and someone can know and maybe someone's interested in your work and they want to find out what you did and this is how they do it. So it's kind of, um, you know, it's really critical that, that people's uh, pages are kept up to date. So uh, just yesterday I kind of looked at this and I said oh okay cool so like you know Camille's been doing this and that and I'm just kind of trying to see what they have done lately or what has been um included on their website or their wiki page lately and clearly awards and fellowships stops at 2016. I'm certain that Camila has done something in the last four years uh, and that's not reflected here. And then um, even going down to their published writing. Now, uh, absolutely Camila publishes like articles and sort of standalone sort of journal things, but also like prolific, uh, you know, put her outer of like full, full books, catalogs and things. And I know because I've seen it and looked at it, that No New Theories was put out by, um, or was published by Printed Matter. I think this was in 2009, yeah, or 2019, I wish 2009, could we go back and start things over? Um, but 
not included at all on her wiki page and a super, super important part of this person's practice. So, you know, if I knew about that book and couldn't, didn't see it on here anywhere, you know, it's not included in selected exhibitions, where might it be, right? I'm going down the page. So just in terms of making an edit and keeping something up to date and really marking how artists are continuing to build and progressing in their career, um, I would be able to go into this section, um, you know, hit edit. So I'm working right now in the visual editor and there's a lot of copy pasting. I actually don't want to work in the visual editor. There's um, a lot of copy pasting that happens in um, Wiki. It's a real, <laughs> it's a real thing um, that we do. And let me just go back to the other editor. Um, so this is actually what I wanted. So this may look super wild to some folks, but it is the way that Wikicode looks. So I'm still going to do this. And again, um, All I'm doing here is putting in the title. Let's just say this is 2019. Um, let's see if this, do we know a month? We're just going to put 2019. Um, and Eliza, while you're there, um, there's mm -hmm. another um, book by Endless Editions that Endless Editions published. Mm -hmm. And that one is called, let me just pull that up, An Alphabetical Accumulation of Approximate Observations. <laughs> yes, I think I have, is that, wait. Mm, no, yeah, I, I saw that one, I think, too. See, making so many things. Um, and they're like not even referenced and it's like actually such a critical part of, it's like, yes, of course, all these other articles are also important, but making a whole book is important. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, just linking to what the book is, I'm just copying from printed matter. I'm going back, these are all, uh, even though it's in code, it's pretty standard things. We can show you how to do this. I'm inserting this link. It's showing up. I'm deleting this little space that I made. Uh, let me come down here. Published writing. This is just a trick so that, you know, when you edit anything, other people can see what you did. So added new book um, and publish the changes. And so magically, all of a sudden, now no new theories. We're back to like the sort of um, read interface, not the editing interface. And and you know, during um, the rest of this afternoon, I can put the other one in there. But now no new theories is there. So it goes to printed matter, so somebody can see this. If I further wanted to. Um, share about the book, what I would do, and, and I looked it up previously. Uh, this is a, a review or a summary written by someone else. So I would want to find information that someone else has written on a site that is reputable, right? So this is a site that's related to, I think, NYU's MFA program. I can't remember who's MFA. Oh, SVA's. Um, SVA's uh, 
MFA program. So, you know, reasonably reasonable in terms of publishing. So I could go through here and say, this book is about blah, 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 and include it in her article and cite this article. So it's really important that things like this get up there. It, it, it rounds out Camilo's practice. Um, it links to things in Wikipedia for printed matter. There's a whole bunch of ways that I could tag that um, to, to make it link to other articles about publishing and um, yeah. Uh, we can link to a publisher. Oh, okay. So I'm reading this comment is helpful to beat out Amazon. Cool. So yeah, there's like other reasons that <laughs> linking and keeping uh, people's pages and their information up to date is important. So that's just an example of one like super little thing. I think I'm more of like that kind of editor than like write a whole article. I'm like, well, this person did this, get it in there. This person did this, get it in there. And you just, you try to, um, Try to make those little little helps for everyone. Um, so yeah, I that's I know that I'm sort of chit chatting about a million things, but if anybody wants to talk to me about anything, I'm putting this in here again, um, and I'll be over there for a little bit. Yeah, um, Liza, before we all hop on to um, edit Wikipedia, um, that was amazing, by the way, just seeing that. Oh, if thanks. You change, you're like, yes, <laughs> that's so cool. Um, someone asked, can you talk about uh, more of the limits? Um, uh, can you talk more about the limits and problems of the neutrality of Wikipedia? And are there platforms that are pushing back against that kind of perspective of like um, perceived neutrality? Um, I guess, well, I may answer this in a little bit of a roundabout way um, that's kind of specific to our project. And I sort of, um, I sort of alluded to it when I was kind of saying that people sometimes think that someone is not notable enough or not um, important enough to be included in, uh, in Wikipedia. And there is this idea about notability, which to some degree is not neutral. Um, it is some sense of subjectivity. Like this person has done X, Y, and Z. And the way like with artists that they do it um, is an artist should have had two solo museum shows and some amount of write-ups. And like, that's nobody. Nobody gets like, unless you are like, you have a million dollars and you know, Gagosian is representing you, that's not easy to do. Right. So this idea that um, you have to be at this checkbox um, to be included is something that we're really pushing against. And I think that that's maybe a gateway into thinking about neutrality and this idea of, of no rules. Right. There there are no rules and there are also these guidelines. So. Um, I don't know of other places that are just kind of like freewheeling that have the authoritative power of Wiki, but I do know that if there's something that you or, you know, we're a user group, there's people that come and edit with us and edit behind our cause all the time, feel strongly about something or feel that like, and I can't, I, I don't know if this person is still there, but they can come ask me um, if there's something that is being, that you believe is neutral and that is being pushed against, there are people who will come back and support you. And there's ways that you should push against um, those limitations. And I think one of the ways that we usually talk about it because uh, Vivian, as you mentioned at the beginning, um, prioritizing paper and not, uh, there's a lot of language things that we talk about. There's a lot of um, embodied knowledge that we talk about. There's all sorts of ways that this does not translate into Wiki. Like how, how does Wiki believe that the embodied knowledge, like we talk about it with food all the time, right? Like that you know that just a pinch of something is exactly the recipe. Well, somebody on Wiki might say, well, what is a pinch? Is it a teaspoon? Is it three teaspoons? Whose body? Based on what? Whose pinch, right? Like, and these are, these are real knowledges. These are real things that are between people that make up cultures. 
that um, have distinctions and lineages and are archives? And how does Wiki account for those things? And how does it incorporate, incorporate those things? So to this idea um, about, yeah, whose knowledge, right? We, we ask a lot of times and, and we get to it a little bit more in our essay, who is uh, empowered to speak on this platform? We just have to try to shove ourselves in there because there's not a lot of, um, you know, Wiki does make invitations and we want everyone to come in and edit anywhere they want to edit, but um, we have to kind of take the room <laughs> for ourselves because I don't think we're, everybody's getting invitations all the time to just like come and tell us about your previously marginalized whoever or whatever or whatever you're thinking, right? Like it's working against those stats of, of, of domination of like, yeah, this is, this is written by men, white men. And, and we are just like, no, we'll also be here. So uh, yeah, I don't think that necessarily answered that person's question, but it is, uh, there is things to push back against and we really support doing that and, and taking that fifth rule of like, there's no rules, we're gonna do whatever we want. We're gonna try to get this stuff in there and try to you know, push the bounds a little bit because we think it's important and it's real to us, you know? So yeah, they kind of um, deal with it. I guess just to, to um, end with this question of like, you kind of talked to this, but you know, a lot of people tuning in are other publishers as well. Um, what, or is there anything that you would like to, um, kind of, you know, uh, you know, give as a takeaway to publishers and their role in, in all of this. Um. Yeah, I think, well, first of all, don't write your own stuff, <laughs> but um, <Yeah. laughs> because somebody will, somebody will be like, hmm, that seems not good. And they will like block you and you'll be excommunicated. So don't like write about your own, I published this today and blah, blah, blah. So that's the first number one thing. But I think that there is another way that, um, you know, within uh, your sort of locality, if it's you and some other folks that you're friendly with and you know you're gonna be, um, there's when we can all meet again, or even in these times, it's like have an exchange. Say, hey, okay, you all put out these three books or these two things and we put out this thing. And is there a way that we can write about each other's things and get them into, into wiki or onto the web in a certain way. We talk about having um, those exchanges often, right? So one of the early forms of uh, Black Lunch Table was inviting a whole bunch of artists into someone's living room and artists who didn't know each other necessarily or closely. And everyone has their five articles that are about them and their CV and you exchange it with someone who doesn't really know you and they write your Wikipedia page. They don't have to be your friend. They don't have to be anybody because it's neutral. He's like, okay, here's the facts. You were here, here and here. Great, do it, super, you know? And I think then those people who are, are written in and the projects that are written in and the presses that are interrelated and linked to a city and then you know, um, searchable because we didn't even talk about how important uh, info boxes and searching on Google is directly uh, um, fulfilled basically by wiki information, right? Like uh, we didn't even get there. It's like a whole thing. But um, just having those, you know, a page for an artist who put out a publication this year and has a couple other whatever links. Um, so I, I just think building local relations that share an interest in getting their publications into parts of Wiki, it might not be like that you're putting the whole book or you're writing the whole artist page, but maybe it was at some location and you're making sure that it's written as like something that was in an exhibition at X gallery, right? And and you can partner with other presses and, and just kind of share the information. So it just, it snowballs. Once you know how to edit and you start looking at what's really happening in there and who all's meeting in a local town and there's online edit-a-thons all the time. It's like, I did not, I was never, did I know I was gonna call myself a Wikimedian ever? No, 
and Heather and Gina and I knew each other from other projects and it all snowballed. And I'm like, I had a wiki all the time. Like, uh, not in, it was not something I thought I was gonna do. So I think that there's really a lot of space to, you know, put digital anchors in for all sorts of presses and all sorts of ways. So my suggestion is get with some other folks in your town, local zone or somebody else that publishes the same media, bunch of Rizzo people get together, just all get your stuff in there. So um, Black Lunch Table is always willing to help. Um, we have monthly edit-a-thons uh, every fourth Saturday, but we have a bunch of different programming for COVID. So just find us, email us, and we'll support you any way we can. So yeah, that's my long-winded answer. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, so every hop on over to that bit.ly, um, bit.ly slash Black Lunch Table Meet. Um, you'll be there for th until three, the next two hours. Um, and then we're gonna meet back here for the rest of programming at two. Um, so if you wanna stick around, that's, that's cool too. Um, but we'll be taking a break. Thank you all so much. Bye. Bye.